I stumbled across, like, again, the Jackson Hinkle Vosh debate. Vosh, Vosh, Vush. Um, around here, we like to say uh, Vosh's name different every time. Um, <laughs> so, uh, they did that debate, and, you know, for some people who don't know, uh, Vosh and I have gotten into it. Uh, we've had back and forth or whatever. I made a whole video about him, uh, talking about the DPRK that he like skipped through and didn't really watch. Um, <laughs> but just called me a tanky or whatever. And then, Hey, what's up everyone? Yeah. So then he was like, uh, he wanted me to debate him. And I was like, no, debates are dumb. I don't think you're smart or even an honest actor. Um, and you're really, really articulate and I don't want to get, all nervous and, and do a voosh debate and have to worry about, you know, like, uh, saying all the right things within the, you know, usually debates are like, you have an opening statement and it's all structured and blah, blah, blah. And then the person's going to interrupt you. And I don't like to interrupt people, man. I like to have conversations with people who care about learning. And, um, I didn't feel like voosh was actually interested in learning. I felt like he was, you know, interested in winning a debate. Um, and getting his fans on his side and, and continuing to push this narrative that helps him, you know, have such a successful stream and, and have so many debate streams that everyone who's a tanky is just a conspiracy theorist who's a far right winger. So um, I, that's what I, I uh, remembered when I watched this Vouch debate with Jackson Hinkle um, because it's so obvious in this debate, it becomes so obvious. He did that for Hakeem, Luna, Oi, etc. Right. And, and Hakeem and Luna, Oi, English isn't their first language. So it's like in, um, in a debate format where a lot of it is about being articulate and a lot of it is about thinking of uh, what you want to say and like stuff off the top of your head really quickly. When someone who's really well read on, on things like theory um, and history like Luna, Oi and Hakeem um, anti-imperialist history outside of like Western liberal narratives, uh, Vouch, instead of listening to their, their videos, like I made a long video explaining the DPRK to him that he skipped through instead of like listening and trying to learn, he he's like, okay, debate me tanky. And then if they don't debate him, he's like, see, you know, tankies don't know anything. And then if they do, if they do debate him, he does what we're gonna, what we're gonna break down today. So I don't know how long this stream will be. I just uh, I might keep going for a while, but I just had this um, I just had this idea to do. Um, I'll react to some of the videos you guys are. We make earning your bachelor's degree. Um, but I I really just wanted to break down this debate because it it's so More affordable. The savings and of up to twenty. No, Jackson Hinkle definitely won this debate. Vosh ended up rage quitting at the end. Um, but it shows it encapsulates so so perfectly um uh what what Vush does and, and the slimy tactics he does in debates and it reminds me there's this video it's like uh how is ben shapiro so dominant in debate some of you might have seen it and if you watch the video you know you're expecting it to be like he just has good arguments or he's really smart or whatever but all it is is a bunch of like rhetorical tricks right like a bunch of tricks you can use to make other people look stupid when you're talking to them uh, in a debate format. So um, rather than just like trying to get to the truth, right? All these Ben Shapiro debate tricks are just ways of tripping up your opponent uh, when you're in this setting. And Vouch is really good at them. <laughs> um, he's a very good talker. Um, yeah, let me see. Dominant in debates. Yeah, so this video, seven psychological tricks to win any argument. This isn't even the one I was thinking of, but like, that's what it is. It's, it's psychological tricks to win an argument, which is like, that's not the point of argumentation, right? The, the point of argumentation should be to, uh, to debate ideas um, with the idea that uh, you can get to the truth, right? Or, or, so, or closer to the truth shoot, via that debate. Um, but with, with online culture and debate culture, it's different, right? It's more about winning. It's more about and, and not only that, with the internet, you know, it's about building a platform, right? Like every Vosh video you see, he's very, you know, his name is plastered on it. He's always pushing people to, to his different platforms, which, you know, not saying I don't do that. It's kind of, uh, you know, kind of something that happens uh, just being online, 
um, and happens with the internet and like profilicity, um, as you could call it, where everyone's got this like online profile they're trying to maintain and grow. And obviously people like Bausch are trying to make a career out of it. So, um, but you know, the, the, and, and not to say that's always bad, but that translates into these slimy debate tactics that are horrible, um, horrible for, for informing people, horrible for actually getting to the truth about what's happening. So yeah. So first off, I just right away, this is Assad. Or I mean, this is, uh, this is Assad. This is, uh, Vush's, um, thumbnail on his debate with, with Jackson Hinkle. So he, he is trying to associate Jackson with Bashar al-Assad, uh, the president of Syria, right? Because in Vash's head, if he can, he can associate these crazy tankies in the U.S. who don't want to launch missiles at Syria with Assad, you know, then he can portray them as crazy tanky dictator defenders, which is the narrative he puts out there about anyone who's not a lib like him. Um, also, Debating the slipperiest conspiracy theorist I have ever met, right? So it, an appeal to th authority, an appeal to orthodoxy, right? Um, I have the orthodox opinion. This is the common sense opinion. Um, anybody who disagrees with me is a crazy conspiracy theorist, right? It's less about the information. It's less about the actual ideas or topics or events being discussed. And it's more about these broad abstract narratives that Vosh is trying to put out there, right? All these Marxists are crazy, they're tankies, they're dictator defenders, they're the exact same as the alt-right. You know, I am an enlightened liberal, uh, I do not fall for these conspiracy theories, right? When in reality, all Jackson Hinkle does this whole debate is, is read from the OPCW uh, reports from Ian Henderson, who was a, um, the investigator on the ground in Duma, Syria, uh, who blew the whistle and said that um, the U.S. was... Uh, um, claiming that there was a chemical gas attack by Assad, which they used as justification to launch missiles into Syria um, and, and to continue their interventionism in Syria. And reporters at the OPCW said there was no evidence of these attacks. Right. So Jackson doesn't offend, uh, defend Assad. He doesn't say that he doesn't say that these attacks were faked by the CIA or anything because there's not evidence of that. All he does is stick to the evidence um, that was written in the OPCW report by the the senior investigators at the UN right he's not defending Assad he's sticking to the facts of the issue and because Vosh knows that he's wrong on the facts he's gonna constantly appeal to these broad narratives so I'm talking a little bit too much let me let me show you what I mean no reason to uh continue with the pleasanties are you ready to get into it yeah I mean as you know there's a lot to get into so um, I guess I'll just start off by saying, uh, for, for the audience who doesn't know me, I'm a relatively new streamer, political streamer. I've been doing this for about a year and a half. My name's Jackson, mm -hmm. and uh, I am I'm not a journalist, but I've been following this story very closely. And uh, I was frustrated by some of the things that you said on your stream uh, regarding both the general findings of the OPCW investigators and of my own views on the subject. So that's why we're here. We're going to talk about it. All right, so for a little bit of context here, um, uh, Ian Henderson, OPCW. Um, this is Bellingcat is um, Bellingcat is a uh, an arm of the U.S. State Department. It's an arm of the NED. So the first thing that comes up when you search these OPCW attacks in Google um, is an arm of the U.S. State Department claiming, you know, basically making Vosh's um, making Vosh's position that he's been making about these these OPCW attacks. But um, Aaron Mate and the folks at Gray Zone have been following this very closely. Um, uh, so mostly just platforming OPCW officials. Right. So mostly platforming people who were in Syria, in Duma, Syria at the time of this supposed chemical gas attacks, who have said nothing except for there was no um, evidence of chemical gas attacks. Right. This is senior investigators at the United Nations who were tasked with investigating chemical gas in Syria, who had worked for the United Nations for years without ever doing anything like this, who said there was no evidence of, of chemical gas. And that's it, right? That's all they said. So the implications of that then are like, what? Um, you know, was there, uh, was there a faked attack? You know, did they fake a chemical gas attack so they could launch missiles at Syria? We don't know. That would all be speculation. 
Uh, but those are the kind of positions, those speculative positions, are what Vosh is going to try and push Jackson Hinkle into taking this whole debate, rather than engage um, with the facts of the reports on the ground and um, all the reports from the various OPCW officials. So essentially the UN and, and corporate media and uh, outlets like Bellingcat and the National Endowment for Democracy that we were talking about earlier um, have, have done everything they can to cover this up. Right? They've done everything they can to, to silence Ian Henderson. And we know this happens right when people blow the whistle from within inside the U.S. State Department. Just look at Edward Snowden, Chelsea Manning, Julian Assange. All these people um, blew the whistle from inside the U.S. State Department or various arms of the U.S. State Department said these bad things are going on, you know, whether it be the NSA or the military or, or the drone programs or whatever else. And since they've been persecuted relentlessly um, by the arms of the U.S. government, uh, they've been silenced, they've been smeared as like traitors um, and liars and, and puppets of Russia. And, and this is exactly what Vosh has been doing to Ian Henderson and these other uh, OPCW officials who worked at the UN their entire lives and then blew the whistle on this one event because there were so much uh, there were so many inconsistencies and it was used as a uh, um, justification for US missile strikes. So as um, the imperialist West and the U.S. State Department is trying to shut this guy up, this whistleblower from with inside the State Department, um, who's, who's saying nothing except there was no evidence of chemical gas, um, and they've tried to silence me as soon as I blew the whistle on this, um, Vouch is helping to silence this guy, right? He's helping to silence a man being persecuted, uh, a man and these other officials being persecuted by the U.S. government uh, for sharing secrets about the U.S. government or for revealing lies about U.S. imperialism. So Vouch here is, is playing the exact same role as, as the imperialist media. Um, and yeah, yeah, so that's just a little context and background. But, but now that you know that, which I'm sure a lot of people have been following this, um, but now that you know that, watch watch what Vosh tries to do. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll just play it for a little bit here. I'm sure. All right, so a little bit of a preamble before we get into this. I suspect this is probably going to be a waste of time because I have a lot of experience debating Holocaust deniers. I know that generally speaking, when people form their opinions based on conspiracism, it's usually not because they actually have a vested interest in the facts. Uh, it's usually because they have like a set of biases that existed beforehand and they'll engage in like selective reasoning to adopt any beliefs that they can use to post hoc justify those, you know, pre-existing biases. I guess we'll see how much of a waste of time this turns out to be. So right there. So uh, it was very clear from these two uh, Vosh and Jackson Hinkle's interactions on Twitter and through this debate and, and Vosh even admits it later on that he had not looked into this issue at all, right? He had not been following the OPCW cover-up. He had not been following the different reports by Ian Henderson. Uh, he had not been following the attempts by the United Nations to cover up these reports from Ian Henderson and to silence him and, and to smear him as a puppet of Russia and, and as someone who was funded by Putin with no evidence. Um, Vosh, Vosh claims that he hasn't been following this very well, and it becomes very apparent early on that he literally researched the issue the day before. Actually, there was a screenshot that someone got of, of Vosh's computer where he was messaging back and forth uh, with one of the main people pushing this narrative that there were chemical gas attacks and that uh, launching missile strikes into Syria was good because it helped fight Assad, blah, 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 blah. Um, so it's very obvious that, that Vosh didn't know what he was talking about going into this issue, uh, going into this debate. Uh, so rather than do his research and rather than change his mind and rather than try and find out if he's wrong, he immediately starts the debate by saying, you are a conspiracy theorist, right? You are a conspiracy theorist, and I assume you are justifying all your positions uh, uh, working backwards from your conclusion, right? So you decided uh, that Assad's chemical gas attacks weren't real, um, and, and then you found any evidence you could to justify that position. When in reality, I think the opposite happened. I think Vosh didn't know anything about the issue before going into this. Um, and then once he did the research, he w realized the evidence was so overwhelmingly not on his side um, that he had to use these slimy debate tactics of, you are a conspiracy theorist, you are a tanky, you are an Assad defender. I'm not going to engage with the actual evidence that you're bringing up. I'm not going to engage with the OPCW reports. Um, I'm not going to engage with the actual arguments. I'm going to use these abstract narratives like, I am a rational person, you are a tanky conspiracist, Assad defender, right? I don't have to justify that at all. You know, I'm just gonna, gonna make these broad claims. Um, I mean, he's gonna try and justify it later, but you can already see um, what he's trying to do here, right? He's trying to set up the debate so he can win, 
right? He can win by making the other person look like a crazy conspiracy theorist, and I am the rational one, um, without engaging uh, with any of the evidence at all. <laughs> Um, so yeah, very interesting and very hilarious that Vosh didn't research this till the night before and then he got destroyed, but here we go. So I wasn't that familiar with the specifics on this incident until I guess last night. I because saw you're doing some uh, late night Wikipedia prepping, right? He just said he wasn't familiar with the issue until last night. And Jackson says, oh, you were doing that Wikipedia prepping, right? So you see him claiming here that Jackson is working back from his conclusion. When in reality, Vosh was talking shit about Assad and, and talking junk about this issue and, and uh, throwing, sh uh, smearing anybody who, who drew attention to the OPCW reports, the reports from the senior investigators at the UN, um, he was talking about it without knowing what he was talking about. So then when he got called out on that, he, he um, even though he didn't know anything about the issue, uh, uh, he, he admits he doesn't know anything about the issue, and then his research was all working backwards from his conclusion, which is, it, funnily enough, what he accuses Jackson of, right? He says, you're working backward from your conclusion because you're a conspiracy theorist. It's like, no, Vouch, you are working backwards from your conclusion because you said something that aids imperialism. You said something super imperialistic without doing your research, and then you got called out on it, and rather than change your mind um, and, and do some more research, you decided to work backwards from your conclusion and continue to lie, smearing a senior investigator who is uh, blowing the whistle from inside the United Nations and calling everybody who, who takes those reports seriously a crazy conspiracy conspiracy theorist or a tanky or an Assad defender because those are abstract narratives that you can use to smear people and make it look like they're not as enlightened as you yeah I'm not familiar with like every conspiracy theory out there I also don't know much about like Alex Jones claims about Sandy Hook so, so right there right there another perfect example right he's trying to conflate not not um, the details of this issue um, with conspiracy theories but the people involved with it right He's saying he's he's attacking the personalities and the identities, um, the individual identities of the people involved. Very, very liberal thing to do. Very, very individualistic, liberal way to think about things, right? Um, Alex Jones is this person on the far right, this conspiracy theorist who I don't like, right? So when I'm debating people on the left I don't like, these tankies, if Vouch uh, can compare them to Alex Jones, you know, he can, he can uh, portray them as crazy and, and keep this narrative going that everybody um, who doesn't accept mainstream imperialist liberal narratives is just a crazy conspiracy theorist. Because, all because he knows uh, the facts are not on his side in this debate, right? But rather than have an actual debate, rather than uh, discuss the issue and try and get to the truth, he would rather say, you're Alex Jones, you're a conspiracy theorist, you jerk off Assad. Like, he hasn't said anything so far, and all Jackson will say this whole debate is what Ian Henderson and the, the senior investigators at the United Nations have said about this. Sometimes you gotta like... Which is that the United Nations have been lying about this and attempting to cover up these reports from the inside, from the actual investigators on the ground in Syria. But I'm sure Vush went to Syria and investigated himself. Uh, he's, uh... He's a very rigorous journalist. Like, pack that stuff in. It's also, like, completely irrelevant to anything a progressive should care about, so. But I looked into it, and... And it's a, another, another abstract argument. It's irrelevant for anything progressive should care about. Yeah, I'm not a progressive. I'm a communist, dummy. The information in favor of my side was so overwhelming and so compelling that by the end of this conversation, I legitimately believe that your continuing to disagree with me can be attributed only to mental illness or willful dishonesty. All right, I want everyone to listen to that part again, because that is the part that, that made me uh, want to hop on Twitch and make this argument. That made me want to show people this. But I looked into it, and the information in favor of my side was so overwhelming and so compelling that by the end of this conversation, I legitimately believe that your continuing to disagree with me can be attributed only to mental illness or willful dishonesty. I actually believe, like, at first I thought, like, oh, God, this is going to be, like, a really confusing and granular issue where, like, it's going to be really tough to understand. But the more I looked into it, I realized that this is such an unbelievably difficult issue to contest the general narrative on that like wow you know but again he so knows he's wrong there he knows he's wrong so he goes on this long spiel 
talking nothing about the information or the evidence or or the questions uh, or I mean yeah the uh, involved in this question um, of what happened in Duma Syria and what are the senior investigators at the UN saying right he says I looked into this last night and I'm so correct that you must have a mental illness if by the end of the debate you still have the same positions right I don't need to talk about the evidence yet right I don't need to talk about the issue at hand He's he's made like four or five abstract claims now that Jackson is um, a, a, uh, a conspiracy theorist, uh, the same as Alex Jones. And now he's saying that if Jackson does not take the orthodox position, the Vauchite position, then he, in fact, has a mental illness. So you see how he sets the stage. Right. And, and do you see how he appeals to these abstract narratives. Right. So he sets the stage by saying, like, you know, uh, portraying his opponent as a, a conspiracy theorist, because his abstract narrative is that all the tankies are crazy, just like the right wingers are crazy. You know, and, and me in the in the left lib center um, are the enlightened ones uh, who actually, you know, who actually know what they're talking about because we follow general narratives. Right. He hasn't said anything so far about the actual evidence. Right. He hasn't he hasn't said anything except uh, it my side, you know, anyone who doesn't believe my side, anyone who's not on the side of my narrative um, is actually uh, mentally ill. And that's why, um, which is he knows he knows the evidence isn't on his side. So he's trying to set this debate up as, you know, uh, my opponent is literally mentally ill. And that's why they're saying all these things, because he knows Jackson is going to destroy him once they actually get into the evidence. Again, like I'm coming into this with a little bit of bias because I've I've interacted with a lot of members of the broader like gray zone uh, Jimmy Dore community and I have, let's say, like a negative opinion of them. Again, again, no evidence, abstract narrative. What is this like the fourth or fifth uh, kind of other group or other um, or group of people that has nothing to do with this issue? Actually, gray zone kind of does. Um, but yeah, but. Uh, that he's compared Jackson to has nothing to do with Jackson, right? Um, it's you are the gray zone. You are Jimmy Dore. You are a conspiracy theorist. You are alt-right. You are Alex Jones, right? You're not saying anything, dude. You're just attacking his personality, um, this individual guy, by associating him with other individuals you don't like because you're a goddamn lib uh, who doesn't actually think about evidence or issues or history or, or anything um, materialist. Uh, all you think about is the personalities of different Twitch streamers and how you can destroy them to grow your own audience. You know, um, but I don't know. Maybe you'll change my mind. We've, you know, had some pleasant interactions in the past, so I guess I'm open to that uh, being adjusted. So you wanted to talk about the OPCW report, uh, the chemical weapons attack on Duma, or alleged uh, chemical weapons attack, and all of the uh, implications and possibilities theretofore. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. One so notice he says there all of the implications and possibilities there to for. So that's going to be very important. Um, rather than just talk about the chemical gas attacks and, and all the evidence surrounding that, um, Vouch's argument, you know, if he just focused on that, he would be it would be very very obvious that he's wrong. That that Vouch is just siding with the National Endowment for Democracy, uh, Bellingcat, um, and other arms of the U.S. State Department who have put out narratives on Syria before launching missile strikes at them. Um, if they just focused on the evidence surrounding these alleged chemical gas attacks, uh, that would be very obvious. Uh, but Vouch brings in the different possibilities and the different um, uh, things that could stem from that. So what that means is he's going to try and smear Jackson as an Assad apologist, right? He's going to say, well, if you are saying um, these things about the chemical gas attack that there's abundant evidence for from the senior investigators within the UN, then therefore you must defend Assad. Right. He's going to make all these extrapolations from the data and from the actual issue where he knows he's very wrong or at least very um, ill informed. Wonderful. Yeah, we don't have to talk about anything besides that. Do you mind if I give some initial context, though? This isn't something my audience is that familiar with. I want to explain like the broader context, if possible. Happily, go for it. Yeah, you got to you got to read that U.S. State Department narrative. Right. And, and what's so sad is like there there is so much, you know, put out there by the corporate media. Right. They'll take um, they'll take reports from like the National Endowment for Democracy, which is literally an arm of the State Department or Bellingcat, uh, you know, and then and then corporate media outlets or mainstream media outlets like the New York Post or whatever blow these stories up. Right. So you have um, you have some kind of government agency which with some kind of authority and some kind of authority within their name, like the NED or Bellingcat. 
um, or or H uh, Human Rights Watch, um, which is a, a human rights organization with CIA members and and um, Western capitalists on their board. Um, they will report something like Venezuela is a dictatorship, Syria is an evil dictatorship, and then the Western media, corporate media, blows it up. Um, or they do this with China also, and then they say, here, because of this report from the NED, you know, here's 20 different. Um, 20 different reports from corporate media um, repeating this narrative from the NED. I mean, this is basically Noam Chomsky's manufacturing consent. Um, this is how lies get propagated and spread to justify regime change. And Vouch, who calls himself a leftist, right, who calls himself new media, who calls himself a YouTube streamer, um, is using the wealth of propaganda that's handed to him by the imperialist Western media to attack other lefties, right, other lefties. I don't consider Vouch on the left. He's an imperialist lib. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's really quite disgusting. Yeah. Okay. So Bashar al-Assad is a brutal, tyrannical, far-right dictator. Uh oh, my gosh. I can't believe I missed this when I was originally doing the stream. But he called Assad far-right. You can call Assad authoritarian, right, or the leader of an army in a civil war who killed people. That's totally fair. But he's a Ba'athist socialist. He's a pan-Arabist who believes in uniting the Arab nations against Western imperialism. And the majority of Syria's economy, their banks and industry are state-owned. And they're trying to transition to socialism and build an anti-imperialist country. So you can hate Assad all you want, but characterizing him as just a right-wing dictator is ridiculous and shows how little violence knows about the historical development of Syria. So that's his context, right? That's that's Vouch uh, uh, setting the stage, given the historical context. A bunch of abstract terms about the leader of Syria, right? Uh, why don't you start it, Vouch, with, well, you know, Syria has been struck by multiple missile strikes from the U.S. Um, in the last 10 years. There's proof that the U.S. spent billions of dollars on a propaganda campaign in Syria backing the far-right elements like Jaysh al-Islam, this Islamic extremist group who the U.S. has been funneling arms and weapons into, um, and it's thrown Syria into a civil war. And yes, Assad has killed people uh, as he's led um, his army in the civil war against the U.S.-backed right-wing groups. Um, he's done terrible things and, and probably committed war crimes, uh, but uh, that does not mean that the U.S. should be in Syria. Uh, they're imperialistic. Assad has uh, left-wing... Um, economic plans, uh, plans to, to nationalize resources and develop Syria, which is why the U.S. wants to destroy them. That's, that's my narrative. Um, <laughs> it starts with, obviously, imperialism, because we live in the U.S., um, and that's the actual thing we can do something about, is U.S. imperialism. You can't really do things about, you know, Assad being mean. Um, but, but Vouch's narrative, right, it, it starts with Assad is a brutal, tyrannical dictator, right? Abstract words that hardly even mean anything. Um, and, and again, focusing not on the issues, uh, not on the different class forces, uh, not on the military interventionism, uh, not on the evidence of, of cover-ups and, and uh, propaganda campaigns funded by the U.S. and Syria, um, not on any of that, but on uh, abstract uh, uh, adjectives describing the personality and the, and the individual character of Bashar al-Assad. Um, so yeah, he killed a lot of people, right? And he launched missiles that killed civilians. He launched missiles that, that turned people's homes to rubble, as the U.S. has done in Syria repeatedly. Um, but that one, uh, uh, you also have to bring up the context of U.S. involvement in the region and, and give some more historical context as to why Assad has been fighting this war. Um, and then two, that has nothing to do with the OPCW cover-up. So you see, again, uh, he's refusing to talk about the issue. He's refusing to bring in all the evidence surrounding this one issue. He's just uh, trying to portray Assad as the most evil person he can, so he can then associate his opponent, Jackson, with Assad. This is the slimy debate tactics of these uh, debate bros displacement of millions. There have been dozens of chemical weapons attacks that have been attributed to him and verified by a number of international organizations designed to engage in peacekeeping and find facts. So if you're on the left and, and you trust these international organizations from the U.S. State or, you know, funded or, or connected to the U.S. State Department, um, these peacekeeping organizations, you're crazy. And it's obvious you have no media literacy and you do do no research into these issues. Like I was just describing, NED, Bellingcat, uh, Human Rights Watch, all these uh, different peacekeeping organizations with deep, deep connections and funding from the U.S. State Department. Um, so the fact that he doesn't think that matters and the fact that he's appealing to authority um, and in appealing to the general conventional narrative, uh, 
just shows how much he knows, you know, the evidence isn't on his side if they're actually were to focus on the specific issue of the OPCW cover-up. Uh, to fake all of, like, those chemical weapons attacks beforehand would be, like, to, to assemble the evidence in such a way as to form dozens of false flags that tricked so many orgs internationally. Notice how Jackson never claimed that, right? Notice how Jackson never claimed that every single chemical gas attack in Syria was faked um, in order to justify launching missiles into Syria and trying to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. All he's talking about is this one time um, where there were alleged chemical gas attacks in Douma, Syria, that the U.S. used as justification to turn some Syrian homes into rubble with missile strikes. Uh, but Vouch is now bringing up, again, more more uh, uh, events that have nothing to do with the event in question in order to portray Assad as this big evil comic book bad guy and then associate Jackson with Assad because he knows he's fucking wrong. Nationally, it's, it's like unfathomable. So there's a history of the use of chemical weapons by Assad's regime. Who, who, against wait, 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 Vosh, Vosh, Vosh. Sorry, before you continue, mm -hmm. it's just important to get sure. some of the facts right. And, and by the way, I know you labeled me as an Assad defender on your, uh, on your stream title. I, I have mm -hmm. no problem saying that Assad is a brutal dictator, and I do not defend him. What I'm here to do is defend the whistleblowers and the investigators who were sent on behalf. Define brutal dictator, Jackson. Just kidding. As I said... Um, there are tons of critiques of Assad and there are horrible things that have happened uh, in Syria as they fought this civil war um, propagated by the U.S. Uh, but to act like Assad is the only actor in that, right? Like Assad is the one who started out this civil war um, and there weren't right-wing elements within Syria or, or the U.S. backing of these right-wing elements. Like that didn't play a role. Is completely nonsensical and it's a, a totally one-sided imperialistic liberal narrative about Syria. Uh, but, you know, as we're saying, Jackson doesn't uh, defend Assad at all. He just basically says he's a horrible dictator. Let's just talk about this one issue. Um, but that's, you know, Vosh is constantly throughout the rest of this debate going to try and connect Jackson to Assad because that's all he has, right? If they actually talk about the evidence, if they don't talk about these broad abstract narratives um, where Vosh tries to connect every tanky to someone he considers to be an evil dictator, um, he has nothing, right? Uh, his, his narratives fall apart in the face of actual evidence the OPCW into Duma. Um, but I, what I will say is that you said a bunch of uh, international groups and activist groups had uh, confirmed weapons attack. Someone says, why critique Assad from an American perspective, perspective as if our opinions matter or will play any positive role in their country? Exactly. Right? I don't feel the need to come out here and say I support Assad. You know, I've heard Assad say absolutely ridiculous stuff like uh, homosexuality is like a product of neoliberalism or whatever. Just like bigoted nonsense. But like that doesn't mean, you know, I think he should be overthrown or that the U.S. needs to fund Jaysh al-Islam, these extremist right wingers to overthrow him. Right. Um, and, and my critiques of him, my my opinions don't matter that much. What I want is my country to stop launching missiles at his country um, so his people can choose who to lead them. I mean, uh, self-determination and, and national sovereignty is supposed to be supposed to be number one for Marxist dialectical materialists and leftists. Uh, but Vosh doesn't read, so he would not know that. X, that's a pretty broad statement. This is actually the first time that the OPCW has ever been able to go on the ground in Syria and investigate a chemical weapons attack. And that's why this is so important. So um, all other previous uh, chemical weapons attacks uh, have usually had, uh, you know, key evidence that was passed through these rebel groups, these Saudi-funded Al-Qaeda-linked rebel, rebel groups like Jaish al-Islam. Um, and in addition to that, a lot of these previous attacks have been contested. Right. Uh, so we're beginning already. So so I think Jackson actually made a mistake there. So he 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 ended up engaging with Vosh's broader narrative. So this is part of the reason I want to do this for anyone who ends up debating Vosh. I think we can break down the tactics that he's going to use almost every time. Um, so Jackson made the mistake here, which is a mistake I've seen a lot of lefties make when they're engaging Vosh is 
he he pulled away from the one issue, the issue that they're supposed to be debating, and he engaged with Vouch in the broader narratives. Actually, rewatching this, I think that Jackson was trying to say for those specific alleged chemical gas attacks that Vosh was talking about, uh, the OPCW wasn't actually allowed to launch a full investigation, and the only time they were allowed to launch a full investigation um, is when all these reports from Ian Henderson and others said that there was a big cover-up and there wasn't enough evidence to justify the U.S. missile strikes, uh, blah, blah, blah. So I don't think that Jackson was actually engaging with Vouch's broader narratives as much there as he was trying to draw the attention back um, to the issue at hand. So, uh, yeah, I don't think um, he did as bad a job there as I originally thought. I think I was wrong about uh, that originally. So, yeah. Right, so he said... Basically, um, all these chemical gas attacks uh, that happened have had uh, key evidence that they happen uh, come from these right-wing extremist groups who have deep connection to the U.S. State Department that we've been talking about this whole time, right? Kind of saying, well, you know, your broader narrative that it's impossible that these chemical gas attacks um, were all fake is wrong because, you know, there is evidence in each individual case that, you know, uh, uh, the U.S. could be could be propagating a narrative about Assad using chemical gas so that they can launch missile strikes and carry out their economic interests in Syria. Um, but I wouldn't do that, right? Because uh, Vosh wants to pull you into a debate about the broader narratives, right? About whether or not you're a conspiracy theorist um, or whether or not you're a dictator defender. He doesn't want to talk about this one individual time uh, where the OPCW officials uh, came out against the U.N. and they were covered up. So, I would suggest if anyone ends up in a debate with Vosh, uh, make him focus on the one issue where you know he's wrong, because if he knows he's wrong, he's going to try and pull you into this debate about larger narratives and about tankies versus uh, progressives or whatever. So first of all, you can't really claim that you're not defending Assad when you're making the claim that numerous and highly credentialed accusations against Assad with regards to him engaging in crimes against humanity are fake. So key. As soon as Jackson engaged with the, the broader narrative about Assad, that is when Vouch associates him with Assad. So, so Jackson says, well, you know, uh, uh, your larger narrative that all of these chemical gas attacks in Syria have been absolutely verified and proven beyond a reasonable doubt to be true. Uh, I don't know about that. You know, a lot of the evidence was funded through right wing groups uh, or I mean, filtered through right wing groups are coming uh, stemming from right wing groups funded by the U.S. State Department. Um, and, and, and as soon as Jackson engages in that argument, engages in an argument about the broader narratives, Vosh says, now you're defending Assad. Now you're an Assad defender. Gotcha. You're a crazy dictator, dictator defender. I win. Liberals win. Because he knows the evidence isn't on his side, so he has to tie Jackson to Assad, and this is how he does it. He brings up these large narratives, right? Oh, this is what crazy tankies believe. And Jackson says, well, you know, here's the evidence behind why tankies believe that. And Vosh goes, oh, so you're a dictator defender. It's the slimiest and dumbest thing I've ever seen. And this is why I've never debated this idiot. This, I, I don't know how mean I'm allowed to be on Twitch. But this is why I haven't debated this guy. Because he uses rhetorical tricks in every single debate rather than focusing on the evidence at hand and trying to get to the truth. Because he doesn't care about the truth. He cares about his subscriber count. You know, he cares about his ego, about winning the debate. Like, that'd be saying, like, I'm not defending Hitler. I just think that Auschwitz-Birkenau was a POW camp and the deaths there were the... So how many different people has Vouch now associated Jackson with? Without even talking about this one individual issue that they're supposed to be debating once, he's now compared him to Bashar al-Assad, Adolf Hitler, Jimmy Dore, everyone uh, from the gray zone, Alex Jones, and alt-right conspiracy theorists who deny the Holocaust. I don't know if he's done that yet, but he goes on to do that later. So without even engaging in the evidence, at all, and, and Jackson's kind of allowing him to do this. Right, Jackson hasn't said much for the start. He's basically allowed Vouch, um, without even now eight minutes into the debate or whatever, without even talking about the issue once, um, he's allowed Vouch to create this fantasy world, um, this, this structure where Vouch is the rational one um, because he's appealing to authority and Jackson is Hitler. Jackson is Alex Jones. Jackson is a crazy conspiracy theorist tanky, right? Again, appealing to broad abstract narratives about groups of people rather than appealing to evidence uh, relating to the issue that they're supposed to be debating product of like allied bombing train lines so they couldn't get food there 
Um, I mean, this isn't really what we're here to talk about. If you're one, I encourage like any audience member to take a look at human rights violations during the Syrian civil war. Uh, there are estimations on the use of chemical weapons that range from, I believe, 32 is the conservative number that most people use. There are some orgs that claim that it's in the hundreds. Uh, there have been many international organizations that have directly observed the use of torture, unlawful killing, the bombing of hospitals, the indiscriminate shelling of civilian areas. Which, on both sides, right? This is actually true, um, and he's appealing to these international orgs, you know, and it, it depends on what international org you look at. But it's been on both sides, right? So there's been a civil war, and yes, Assad side have have um, launched missile strikes, like I said, that have killed civilians. As have the U.S. bag Jaysh al Islam and right wing extremist groups who they've been funneling arms and weapons into, while also funneling billions of dollars in propaganda into Syria. Um, those those uh, groups have also indiscriminately killed civilians, right? The same as when we funded the Mujahideen in Afghanistan or any time the U.S. has gone around and funneled money and weapons into extremist groups. The Contras in Nicaragua, like, um, you could go on forever, obviously. Uh, but, you know, if, if you just say this is all because of Assad and you leave out um, all the, the U.S. influence and all and if you don't investigate the, the U.S. narratives about this any deeper than, oh, some international organizations told me it was true, uh, then you're not telling the whole story, right? You might be saying something true about Assad. You know, Assad might have, have launched uh, missiles indiscriminately, which is horrible. Um, but then you're leaving out the part of the story, uh, the whole part of the story about who Assad is fighting. Who is he launching the missiles at? Right-wing extremist groups the U.S. has been funding arms and money into. <laughs> and, and your justification is, oh, these international human rights orgs told me that the U.S. narrative was right. Yeah, you don't think the U.S. has any control over orgs like Human Rights Watch who have literal CIA members on their board? The naivety of these libs collective punishment the slaughter of political dissidents the deprivation of food and water the destruction of key infrastructure so we agree uh, Assad is not a good guy was, so we agree so that wait, he's done he's done so many you fucked up things in so the past wait, really quickly is that and Assad had the I mean say what you want about Assad and Jackson here is just going to yeah I don't defend Assad Vaush I see you're trying to associate with me with Assad but, you know, Syria was in a much better state before the war started. You know, you can say what you want about human rights abuses under Assad and, and about the opinions of Assad and certain policies of Assad. I would be fully with you in critiquing them uh, if you brought them up specifically. But Syria was developing themselves and much of their economy was nationalized and state owned. Exactly like any economy that the U.S. decides to try and destabilize and destroy because obviously they want the fucking resources and labor. Um, they would rather have countries have neoliberal economic policies rather than state-run banks and industry the, that try and use labor and resources within that country for the development of that country, right? You can say whatever you want about Assad's um, um, political uh, or his, uh, his dictatorial, you know, or human rights abuses or his uh, authoritarian policies or whatever, and you can critique those individually. But don't act like the Syrian civil war and the endless U.S. missile strikes didn't destroy the infrastructure of Syria and, and really put Syria in a position with, where they were struggling after years of, of developing themselves economically. Um, but, but, you know, these people, uh, not these people, Jackson's good. Um, he's, he's still 21. He's still learning and stuff, but he's, he's like an ML. But these people don't use historical materialism at all. Right? They call themselves Marxists, and then they have no idea what dialectical and historical materialism is. It's never like, oh, this is what was happening with Syria's economy, with their productive base, which Marx said is, you know, the, the center, the anatomy of a society. Uh, they were developing themselves, and a lot of their, their economy was state-owned, and that's when the U.S. started to do destabilization efforts, which have, you know, massively increased things like poverty and homelessness in Syria. Um, but they, they, they have no ability to give a historical analysis, right? It says, oh, Assad killed all these people according to this organization that I Googled. Therefore, Assad bad. And therefore, anybody who gives any nuance to the situation in Syria is the same as Assad. Um, it's, it's insane. I don't, know how these, I don't know how they do it, right? This, I actually commented on this, that this is a... Uh, um, there's some point where I said this debate almost convinced me that Vouch is like a psyop. I have one of the top liked comments on this debate. I'm pretty proud. But it's like, how are you doing this, dude? Do you have, no, do you not care about the truth at all? Do you have no, do you, he must have no interest in actually knowing the, uh, or, or actually analyzing uh, Syria and these other countries using historical and dialectical materialism. 
It's all just, you know, here's their leader. I think he's a bad guy. Therefore, everything the U.S. says about him is true. And, and uh, you know, we don't need to address uh, any of the U.S.'s destabilization efforts in this country because leader bad. No, and I, I just want to make like, sure I just want to make sure we're in agreement on that before we continue. Yeah, Assad, Assad is a bad guy. It's just you cool. were just saying, like, actually, these things haven't been confirmed before and they were all passed through. Syria no, 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 not not. Rebels, not no, 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 true. not all the things that you just said. I said that a lot of the key chemical weapons attacks have been contested by very reputable sources. For example, one of the most notable uh, that the U.S., had indicated was a major, major chemical weapons attack. The alleged chemical weapons attack in Ghouta was actually, uh, it, it was contested by a number of individuals. It was contested by uh, Seymour Hirsch in the London Review of Books. And in addition to that, um, actually Barack Obama confirmed that these reports were false of an alleged chemical weapons attack when James Clapper told him that the evidence of the alleged Syrian chemical gas attack in Ghouta was not a slam dunk and they shouldn't act upon it. So, so now they're, they're actually debating the issue at hand. This is what you need to do, and this is why Jackson beat Bausch in this debate. Once he stopped engaging with the broader narratives, he said, no, Vosh, you just listed off everything bad that Assad's ever done and tried to associate that with me. What I'm talking about is the evidence of these chemical gas attacks, and you see how much the evidence is on Jackson's side. Freaking Obama <laughs> was talking to one of his advisors who told him that there, this is not slam dunk evidence. This is not absolutely verified, as Vouch claims it is, and therefore we shouldn't act and, and launch more attacks into Syria, which is you know, exactly what happened after the, the Duma Syria reports of chemical gas attacks. The U.S. launched missiles, um, I believe it was in 2017 and 2018. They launched giant... Um, missiles into Syria, which also killed civilians. Funny, uh, uh, Vouch only attacks Assad for killing civilians, um, not the U.S. Uh, for launching missiles into Syria and killing civilians. But you see, when they actually come back to the issue at hand, when he gets away from Vosh's broad narratives about how everyone except me is a tanky conspiracy theorist, the evidence is so overwhelmingly on his side, and it becomes so clear. It's so obvious. You know, literally Obama's advisor told him this this uh, this chemical gas attack that you're claiming is 100 percent verified isn't. How do you argue with that? That was that's literally from as high up with inside the State Department and from within inside the military as you can get. The president um, who who started it and oversaw the U.S. intervention in Syria, the NATO led intervention in Syria. I think I think it's called the U.S. led NATO intervention in Syria is the name for it, like the whole name for it. So saying that evidence is not a slam dunk and should not be acted upon is not the same as repudiating the existence of those attacks to begin with. Well, no, you alleged no, 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 you alleged that the they, they definitively took really the difficult to wait, no, oh, wait, please, you, well, you, wait, hold you on. alleged wait, 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 please, please, I need to, I need to call you a conspiracy theorist, please, please, you brought up a lot of evidence there. Let me, let me go back to my broad narratives about tankies. That Assad, without a doubt perpetrated all of these attacks that's what you said no i did not wait i did not did. say that actually you did. You what did. i said is that there was un yeah he did he said you literally said the evidence is so overwhelmingly on my side that anyone who doesn't believe you has a mental illness wait wait, wait wait hold on what i actually said was that there was undeniable evidence which has been corroborated across many international peacekeeping organizations that the use of chemical weapons has taken place in syria the majority of which has been attributed to assad for many of these chemical weapons attacks it is logistically impossible to determine who actually did it we don't always have the ability to fact what <laughs> the majority of these chemical gas attacks have been attributed to assad however we do not have the technology or information to know who did these chemical gas attacks. Does that not seem like a little bit weird to you, Vosh? That, that all these human rights organizations connected to the U.S. State Department are like, oh, we need to launch missiles at Assad, he did chemical gas attacks, um, but then they don't have any hard evidence, and the actual senior investigators who work for the United Nations, this international peacekeeping organization, on the ground in Syria said that there's holes in, holes in the evidence uh, used by the U.N. used to justify launching missiles into Syria. You don't see any inconsistencies there, Vosh? Like, these people are either so naive or they fucking work for the State Department, I swear to God. ...actually determine the exact circumstances that led to chlorine gas contamination in an area. However, a lot of these are very heavily, like, uh, inferentially, like, attributable to Assad. And, uh, I think and I'll also add... Inferentially, 
right? Uh, if you listen to the National Endowment for Democracy in Bellingcat, yeah, you know, they're an arm of the State Department that Ronald Reagan created to replace the CIA in the, in the 1980s. But they inferred that Assad did all this bad stuff. So, how are you going to argue with that, tanky? Holy sh**. <laughs> I never actually watched this full debate. This is farther than I've ever gotten. I, I didn't know how bad this was. I, I turned it off after a while because it was uh, clear. I, actually, I think I did watch this originally when the debate happened, but uh, I didn't watch this part today when I was prepping for, uh, for the show. It's just amazing, man. It's amazing how little he cares about the truth. Just pure ego, and that's, you know, grew up in Beverly Hills. Dude's not working class. He's a, a middle-class liberal Twitch streamer. One of them tend to be. I'll also add, before we continue on here, that um, a lot of these key organizations... Someone says, Eddie, I'm losing brain cells. Yeah, we're done with this. <laughs> we're done with that video. I, I, all I wanted people to see was how Vosh uh, does his debates, right? So, or, and how he appeals to these broad abstract concepts rather than engaging with the actual substance of the debate. So if anyone ever finds himself in a debate with Vosh, that's what he's doing. Or if you ever, I don't know. I don't know. That's just how Vosh works. I thought it was worth breaking down because like, you know, Lenin was big on critiquing um, really, really bad and unhelpful trends within the left. Uh... So, you know, and I think internet politics, they're not super important, but they, they matter somewhat. You know, these people have large audiences. Vouch, you know, Vouch's upload of the debate um, still has more views than Jackson Hinkle's, right? So he's having an influence over a, a fairly large group of people. Uh, so I think it's important to point out how he lies, what he's lying about, why he lies, why he's wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of why I wanted to do that. But uh, we'll take a break from Vouch now.